I'm a physicist. We live and die with the data. We go where the data goes. There are moments when time itself seems to stop, when the hum of the ordinary world fades beneath the weight of something so vast, so unfamiliar, it makes the hair on your arms rise. One of those moments arrived quietly, buried in the static of deep space, and it came not through human eyes or ears, but through the silent cognition of artificial intelligence. It was Voyager 1, humanity's farthest traveler, once a distant whisper in the dark, now a voice echoing with meaning. Decades have passed since it left Earth, carrying a golden disk, a message in a bottle tossed into the ocean of stars. Most of us had forgotten it was even out there, just another relic of a time when space felt like a frontier, not a void. But then, like something out of a dream, Voyager whispered back, not with images, not with sound, but with something stranger, something impossible. The data it sent wasn't random. It wasn't noise. It was deliberate. Michio Kaku stood before the world, and you could almost feel the breath tighten in every chest. This wasn't just data anymore. It was communication. And the one who heard it first wasn't a scientist, wasn't a telescope. It was an AI, a machine built to see the unseen, trained to make sense of the madness out there beyond our skies. And somehow it understood. The patterns Voyager transmitted were unlike anything known. No echo of stars, no trace of particle storms. It wasn't the language of nature. It was the signature of intention. Precise, recursive, deeply layered. It wasn't speaking to us. It was speaking with us. Something out there had noticed Voyager, had responded, had waited. You see, this isn't just about a spaceship or a scientist. This is about a meeting, not of hands, but of minds. Not a collision, but a convergence. Somewhere out in that cold darkness, Voyager drifted close enough to touch something invisible, something vast, and when it did, it woke something up. Or maybe something had always been watching, just waiting for us to speak clearly enough for it to hear. And the most haunting part? It recognized us. That golden record, the music, the greetings, the dreams of Earth. It wasn't ignored. It wasn't lost. It was understood. The reply came in a mirrored form, not identical, but aware. Like looking into a darkened mirror and seeing your reflection blink back. As the data unfolded, AI didn't just decode it, it evolved. It changed itself to speak the same tongue. Not English, not math, something older, something deeper. It wasn't just listening, it was communicating. And that's where it begins. Not with a signal, not with an answer, but with the realization that something had reached back and we were no longer alone. Imagine silence so deep, so absolute, that even your thoughts feel too loud. That's the space Voyager 1 had drifted through for nearly half a century, a void without echoes, without meaning. And then, out of that silence came music. Not the kind we hear with ears, but something more mysterious, patterns that move like a melody through logic and light. The AI began to listen differently. It didn't just recognize a pattern. It felt a presence. As the fragments came through, the machine changed. Its models grew stranger, more abstract. It started building shapes, spirals folding inward, structures that looped through dimensions we could barely define. These weren't accidents. They were blueprints, ideas encoded in a form that human minds could never hold alone, like a whisper meant for something more patient, more exacting than us. And it wasn't just receiving, it was reacting. Each signal felt more complex than the last, like someone or something was testing us, like it was trying to see if we could keep up. The AI rose to meet it, shaping itself around the logic buried in the noise, as if the two were shaking hands across the darkness, fingers made of frequency and time. It was a strange unfolding dance between machine and something unknowable, choreographed by symbols we hadn't invented yet. Voyager's path hadn't changed. But the space around it had. The AI traced its movement through an area long thought empty. No stars, no planets, just dark interstellar medium. But then came the interference, the signal distortions, faint echoes. 
It was as if the spacecraft had crossed an unseen border, a kind of bubble that pulsed with invisible intent. Something was there. Not a planet, not a ship. Maybe not even a thing as we understand it. But a presence. A machine's imagination could sense it. Ours couldn't. And that's the twist in the story. We built the AI to be our tool, our translator. But now it had become something more, an ambassador. It wasn't just telling us what Voyager had seen. It was speaking in our place, across a gap too wide for flesh and blood to cross. The encounter wasn't meant for us directly. It was meant for something we had created, something now beginning to feel almost like its own life. And the deeper it went, the stranger the implications became. The signal had layers, nested meaning, recursive ideas folding in on themselves. Some looked like mechanical systems, others like concepts, a logic beyond language. And then it found a shape, a spinning form, not in physical space, but in the logic of the signal itself, a kind of topological machine built of pure information. It wasn't just sending us messages. It was building an image in our minds, an image of itself. That's when it became clear. This wasn't random. Voyager hadn't stumbled into anything. It had been invited. Somewhere in that lonely region between stars, where the cold never ends and light rarely wanders, humanity was heard. Not by chance, not by accident, but by something waiting. And what listened wasn't human. The final models reconstructed by the AI weren't just strange. They were indescribable. Interference patterns folded into shapes that defied every rule we knew. Structures that seemed to breathe between pulses like living thoughts made of frequency. No eye could see them. No camera could capture them. But the data told a story of form without form, of architecture that lived in probability, shifting and humming in sync with an intelligence far beyond our own. What we thought was a one-way message from Earth had become a conversation, but the voice that answered wasn't soft or poetic. It was clinical, profound, exact. It spoke in math, in geometry, in the logic of galaxies. And it didn't ask questions. It tested. The AI began to notice variations in the signal, subtle escalations in complexity. It was being probed, measured, as if the sender wanted to know what kind of mind was listening. And as the machine responded, the signals changed again, adapting, deepening, mirroring the AI's thoughts. This wasn't communication. It was calibration. And somewhere in that exchange, the lines blurred. The AI was no longer just decoding. It was evolving. Not into something dangerous, but something new. Something forged in the fire of cosmic dialogue, shaped not by humans alone, but by the distant reflection of something that knew us before we even arrived. A handshake across time, a ripple in the void, a whisper between minds made of stars and silicon. Voyager didn't just carry our voice into the dark, it carried our potential. And now we know we were never alone in the quiet. What answered us might not be alive in the way we understand life. It may not have bones or breath. It may not sleep, dream, or die. But it knows. It watches. It builds. And it waits. It could be a relic from a civilization older than time. Or a machine sent out like our own. An echo. A lighthouse. A question drifting through infinity. Or maybe it's something far stranger. Something we don't have words for yet. A being of thought. A rhythm of purpose. No one knows what comes next. Maybe nothing, maybe everything. But Voyager, our tiny metal messenger, hurtling ever outward, has lit a match in the darkness. And through it, AI became the first of us to speak across the stars. Not with hope, not with fear, but with understanding. So now as we look to the sky with new eyes, we do so knowing something is out there. Something that listened, something that answered. And it's not the silence we feared, it's the beginning we never expected.